I told y'all, I make random shit work. Hey yo, Alex, hit him with that for me, bruh. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What, what was that? Don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't, I don't think they heard you, bro. Hit the bell. I don't think they heard you, bro. Don't forget. Like and subscribe, man. I better do that. That's how you get more content. Hit the bell. And the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Bell. Click it. Be short, so I don't always work. What's good, everyone? It's your boy Jakari from Twisted Ever Gaming. I'm back at you with another deck profile. It's been a while since I did one of these. I think the last one I did was the uh, Phantom Knights Raid Raptor Time Thief deck. Uh, so, what you see on the very top is, you know, Dogmatica stuff. And I'm not going to lie, this does have Dogmatica stuff in it, given that you see Ecclesia sitting on the top. But we'll get into the other parts of the deck as we get to those points. But let's get started. So, of course, let's go ahead and get to the Dogmatica part of the deck. And my ratios tend to be a little bit different than everyone else. Three Ecclesia. Two Fleur. And two Maximus. Three Nadir, two Genesis, three Punishment. Yeah, it's a bit of a heavy Dogmatica engine, but uh, the Genesis actually does pull its weight when I need it to. When I take it out, I take it out for some stuff in the side. It makes sense. But it is a very viable target in this deck. Now, for the ones who do, for the people who know me personally, you probably know what the other half of this deck really is. Surprise, surprise. It's Gravekeepers. You ain't figured out why I'm running Dogmatica Gravekeepers. What are all of the Dogmatica monsters? They're spellcasters. What are all of the Gravekeeper monsters? They're spellcasters. It's not the chaos, light, and dark synergy. No, 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 no. It's, in all actuality, 100%, it is nothing more than the fact that they're all spellcasters. So one chief, surprise, I'm only running two commandant. In all actuality, uh, one of my commandants is in two of my, actually my other uh, ultra commandant is in another deck. Uh, running the same purpose, so I'll, I'll explain later. One headman, I'm, I'm still on the one headman. I'm only going to be on one headman until I die, uh, especially in this build. Two heretic. Because there are part, points where I have to run Heretic Beatdown. And it's hilarious. And somehow it still works. In 2021. About to be 2022. Two Oracle. Two Recruiter. One Shaman. And then the three star of the show, two spiritualist, two spy. All right, so y'all already know what this is when it comes to seeing the. This is basically my standard gravekeeper ratios, with the exception of not running three commandant, but. Remember, I have multiple ways of getting to getting Commandant in hand. So, it doesn't bother me to only run two. Truth be told, I see it more often than not anyways. Alright, so... Keeping in line with... We've already done the Dogmatica part of the deck. We've done the Gravekeeper part of the uh, spell, uh, the monsters. So, Steli. 
I stick with the one. Two hidden temples. I'm only running two Necro Valley. Uh, same reason that the Commandant is at two is the same reason why Necro Valley is at two. My other two copies of Necro Valley are actually being run as a two of in another deck. So I had to split them evenly. Truth be told, I really only need two for what I need to do with the deck. So that works out perfectly. And of course, we have multiple ways of getting to the, the Commandant to get to the Necro Valley. So, no, I don't run um, terraforming. I don't want to run terraforming in this deck. Truth be told, I can always recur the Necro Valleys. The only way I can't recur Necro Valleys is if you banish it. If you don't banish it and you just pop it and send it back to my, you send it back to my great, send it to my graveyard. You'll see the card that I used to bring it to put it right back on the field. One tombs. The one temple, which allows me to reactivate this directly from the grave or from my hand if I have one in hand. To ride a spirit. As you have noticed, I don't run a single hand trap. I've been hard pressed on this hill to die on this hill for the last couple of years the reason why i don't run hand traps is because even when i was running straight up magician soul gravekeepers and if you haven't figured out yes the magician souls are in the deck the last two monsters in the deck but, you know, they're not actually the most important thing in this deck, so I didn't, you know, make any a big deal about it. The Dogmatica synergy with Gravekeepers. And yes, because it's Magician Souls, you should figure that. Oh, wait, it's a Spellcaster, too. That's going to come into play because you know one of the spell cards I run in this deck. So. But I don't run a lot. Of, I don't run any hand traps. I was running Imperm, and... It got to a point where Imperm actually became a hindrance to me. I don't run Ashes and anything like that because, as you see, the main deck is all Spellcasters. I have reasons for it. I don't particularly like running Hand Traps in this deck. I've tried. It actually really ruins the consistency of my deck. And, shall see, I run more than 40 very often and trying to do... Hand traps in this deck really just muddy up my deck. Now, I do from time to time put a small solemn package with like two strikes and a judgment or two judgments and two strikes. Things along that nature. Normally, when I when I have my side deck in, in fully intact, it has two judgments. It has two to three judgments, two to three strikes. I might actually have the imperms in there. I believe I have Lightning Storm in there too. But I don't really run hand traps. The Imperms are probably sitting in there and I don't even use, ever side them in. I don't need them. I actually built this deck to kind of be able to play a little bit on first, or going first or going second. So I don't particularly care. But moving on. That's it for all the Gravekeeper and the Dogmatica stuff. As I've already shown you, I do run the two copies of uh, Souls in here. And as you've seen, I have plenty of targets for Souls. Because Oracle, Shaman, and both Flirtily and Maximus are all spellcasters. So, level Level 6 or higher spellcasters to be exact. So, yeah. So, yeah. The souls. And I know my... This is actually starting to annoy me now. Alright. Now, I'm not going to lie. The three cosmics are placeholders. Because I was running the MSTs in here. 
but they were my gold ghost rare MSTs, and I've since taken those out because I kind of wanted to preserve those those uh, MSTs. So I decided just to put these in here for right now. Truth be told, I could put the Twin Twisters back in here, which is kind of funny because Twin Twisters kind of aids to what I want to do with this deck anyway, so I may actually go that route. Uh, two Magicalized Fusion. Self-explanatory. If Necro's not on field, or if I have five spellcasters or more with different names on field, or just wanting to go into Supernaturalist, this. I don't mind banishing banishing my resources off the field. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. Monster Reborn becomes a dead card only if Necro's on field. And Ragaki. So I may end up putting HFD in here at some point. I think I took it out to put it in another deck. I have, you know, I don't have a lot of secrets to go around, so I think that's currently in another deck. Uh, we'll start with the Dogmatica part of the extra deck, and then we'll go into the Gravekeeper and then everything else. So, two Entis. I was running three. I took one out to go into another extra deck that's also running dogs. Uh, three to ten clad. And... One copy of Omega. The Omega's kind of only contingent. It's really only in the extra deck to get dumped for punishment or Maximus. If and only if I do not have Necro on field so I can use its ability. Otherwise, he stays in the damn extra deck and never gets used. Because, y'all see, I don't run any tuners. I was in a build that I was going to do uh, because I was going to actually tack a copy a copy or two of uh, Incredible Ecclesia, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, I traded those to go towards a Ghost Rare, uh, a first deck Ghost Rare, near mint Ghost Rare, uh, Shooting Star Dragon, so yeah. Trade well worth it. You know, three Supernats, only two copies of this. It, the third one's actually in the side deck because of the Omega. And then Soldier of Chaos, Lower Sword, IP, We Witches. All right, so that's it for the standard main and extra the side deck like i said isn't necessarily the important part of this because i hardly ever the hell go into it but if you would like to really know what it is it's quintet oh this is a jumbled mess holy shit this, this is actually quite horrible I have kind of pieced this damn thing out. Oh, shit. Okay. So, yeah. The three lightning storms. Uh, two dark bribes. Three dark rulers. And for the most part, that's really it. Because everything else kind of just gets jumbled around between extra, uh, other side decks. So, what's in all actuality missing is the three imperms. And... The Solemn Package. Yeah. The two, either it interchanges between two judgments and a strike, or two strikes and a judgment. Truth be told, if I really just want, like I said, if I really just want to be that guy, my uh, the the final six cards could really be all strikes and judgments. Like I said, I don't particularly go into my side deck enough to worry about it. So. Like I said, side deck is not the most important thing. Truth be told, it becomes 
if I want to take out the Omega, this goes back into the side deck. It's really the only thing that goes into anything in here. I don't go into my side deck often enough to stress this. If I want to do more of a streamlined play with more Gravekeepers than Dogs, then I may end up siding out like maybe one Entist and one Titanoclad and put another Wee Witch and either Relinquish Anima or Link Rebo in there. But like I said, not the most important aspect of this deck is my side because I don't go into it enough to stress it. Now, I have had somebody ask me, what is a standard combo with this deck? All right, there are multiple routes with this deck. Uh, yes, you can brick with this deck. I will not BS you and act like you cannot, but you can. But the primary starter or combination of cards for this deck are Throne, Commandant, Spiritualist. I'll actually just pull them out. It makes it easier that way. So for the Gravekeeper portion, either Necro Valley, Commandant, or Throne, Spiritualist. If you have Necro Valley Throne and Necro Valley Throne, Spiritualist Throne and Necro Valley Throne, then you don't need this because you're going to always end up searching out one copy of Oracle. Oracle gets you into the play for Supernaturalist being at 3900 attack. Which is normally the strongest you can get him, unless you somehow manage to get two oracles to be those two monsters. But it's the easiest way to do it with these two. So, let's say if you have these and... In all actuality... Say you have a combination of these and either Ecclesia and, and Ecclesia or Nadir Servant. Actually, let's just run it with the Ecclesia. So put this back into the deck. Actually, let's do it. Let's do the full combo. So you're going to try to do what you can to bait out an Ash. So let's go Necro Valley Throne. Just say it gets Ashed. Cool. You're not stressing that. All right. Activate Necro Valley. Normal Spiritualist. Spiritualist effect. Because Necro Valley is on field, Fusion Summon for Supernat. Summon for fusion uh, for Supernat because they're a an extra deck monster has been summoned. Special Ecclesia. Ecclesia gets you into punishment. So now you've got both sets, both sides of the, the deck already set up. You've got an interruption on their turn. You've got the Necro out. My hardest matchups have been. And will always forever be. Unless I get uh, Shaman on field. Unless I find a way to magic out Shaman. Any variant using Shadals. Because Abcalone is the bane of my fucking existence. But if Shaman is on field. Abcalone can't activate. Because it's, a, it's, an, it's an effect that activates... When it's in the graveyard, she negates all graveyard effects. Period. 
But now you have the interruption for punishment. You activate his effect in main phase, so for during the during the end phase. And then at that point you either go one of two routes. You can go one of three routes. You can add another throne. You can add tombs or you can add to uh actually four. Tombs, temples, or Alright, let me be more specific. Necro Valley Temple, Hidden Temples of Necro Valley, Imperial Tombs of Necro Valley, or Necro Valley Throne. It really just depends on what you think the situation requires you to have. But it does give you a, a potential play for next turn. But, uh, folks, that is actually it for the profile. I do really enjoy playing this deck. I did get the idea from this from watching my friend Michelangelo play uh, Dogmatica Altergeist, actually. And it's the synergy with, you know, spellcasters. But if you would like to know the other play, it's say Necro's not on field. And you have commandant spiritualist headman just picking five random spellcasters fleur and a heretic and grave okay so activate magic last fusion this is one of my favorite things to do to people. It, it does actually aggravate the shit out of people. So, banish them. They just look at you funny. Who are you doing what now? Alright, cool. Boom. Quintet nuke the board. That's the whole reason why Quintet's in here. The synergy with the spellcasters. And yeah, I threw six in there, but yeah, you, you, you get the point. It's got to be five with different names, and uh, I have an option. You know what I'm saying? Or say you had a few on the field that you want, you, you don't mind getting rid of, because if they've already expended their effects, funniest part about it is, is now here's one that makes this really funny though. If say Necro Valley is on field, and you have. I'm just going to pick five out of these six. Fleur. Souls. Uh, one of them has to be spiritualist. Because she is a requirement for the fusion. Uh, just pick five. We pick five. Say you have a heretic. A recruiter. And an Ecclesia in hand. Alright, so you're gonna activate Spiritualist's effect. Sp Spiritualist, Commandant, Souls, Him, and why well, not a heretic? Alright, so that was five five spellcasters with different names, right? Quintet Magician, nuke the board. You kept the floor on field. Alright. So you've now nuked their board. We're not this 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 wasn't here for this part. Now that you have nuked the board, you kept Fleur on the field. Monster from the extra deck has been summoned. Special going to punishment yeah, you set the punishment alright so what's this 45 3k cause it's a dog okay yes it, it does not happen all the time yes you can brick in his deck is it very hard to brick yeah it is I, I've not, I 
don't say I never bricked, because I have. I bricked in both my pure grave and the dog version. You can brick. Don't be surprised if you do. The, the one that is really funny is, is I did think of teching a copy a copy of Eldritch the Golden Lord in here. Simply because I can activate Eldritch's effect in Grave to send Necro Valley to the Grave. Add the Eldritch to my hand. Special the Eldritch. Now, this is just something I was concocting a while ago, but I have to make sure that it does work. Uh, where is Temple? Yeah, it actually does work. It does actually work. So, if I have Temple face up and I send Necro Valley for Eldridge's effect, Necro's no longer on field. I no longer control a field spell. Temple can activate, reactivating the Necro Valley from my graveyard or one from my hand. Because it just says once per turn during my main phase. If I control no... During the main phase. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, during the main phase. If I control no card in the extra... In the field spell zone. I can reactivate Necro Valley. From... I can activate a Necro Valley from the field. I mean, from my graveyard or from the hand. So. Another reason why I only run two. But yeah, like I said, that's it for the profile uh, combo tutorial quote unquote uh, I know this is almost a 30 minute long video but it is what it is I, I try to go as in depth as I possibly can with explanations for things for y'all because I do act because people do ask me these questions from time to time but if you would like to see a quick test hand I guess Clizia Throne Headman Maximus. Okay, so it's not the greatest hand. It does get the Necro on board. It does. And in all actuality, if I don't activate the Necro, actually, actually, I have a play with that. It ain't the greatest play, but I have the play. I have a play. All right, so thrown. Commandant. That's it. This is a crusty ass play, but it's a it's a play. Pitch Commandant, get Necro Valley. Do not activate the Necro Valley. Because then that actually will fuck this whole process up. Not, you don't activate it yet, at least. So. Actually, it doesn't. It, it, does, it does, but it doesn't. So. Then what you're going to do is normal the headman, special the commandant. Magical last fusion. He's not going to be the strongest, but he's there. Supernat. Activate neck. Because if one was summoned this turn, Clizia. Punishment. Activate effect for end phase. And on this one, I will probably just go with Imperial Tombs. Add it to hand during the end phase. Because that, that's the end of your turn. It, it's very simple. Straightforward to the point. He's... At 3,200, so, you know, turn one unless you banish him. It's not the easiest way to get over him. Because even if you knock the neck, you get some, you manage to banish or negate the act, the effect of the Necro Valley, he's still 27. And because he's on field with Necro, 
You can't just pop these by conventional means. You either have to send them, spin them, or banish them. But that's it, folks. That's all. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have an idea to make it better, go ahead. I'll listen. Hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's your boy, Jakar from Twisted Nightmare Gaming. Signing off. Till the next time.